A cure for diabetes could be right around the corner after a team of Canadian scientists say they have cured the disease in mice using a new stem cell process. For more on this groundbreaking work, we are joined by Canada Research Chair in Transplant Surgery and Regenerative Medicine at the University of Alberta, Dr. James Shapiro. Welcome to your morning. Hi, Emery. How are you? Uh, I am doing great and excited to learn more. Tell us, first of all, how have you cured diabetes in mice? Okay, well, very cautious for the word cure because it's, it's, it's a very emotive term. But what we've been able to do is take blood samples from patients with different forms of diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, take that blood and then adjust those cells, wind them back in time so they become malleable and then can be changed into insulin-producing cells. Now, inside a, a tiny embryo, it takes 27 days to turn a, a, a standard beginning cell uh, into an insulin-producing islet cell. And we've been able to follow those processes that weren't developed by us, they were developed by some brilliant scientists across the world, including Tim Kiefer in Vancouver, Christina Nostro in, Van in, in Toronto, and, and a number of other uh, scientists across the world. And we can follow those, those protocols, turn these human blood cells into islet cells, and then transplant them into mice that have diabetes and reverse their disease. And, you know, in the old days, this seemed like alchemy, turning hmm. a, a dust and base metal, metals into, into gold. But now this is really possible with new techniques. Well, hearing you describe it, I, that is a bit like what I feel like. I think if you had proposed this before, people would have thought there's no way. But you have found a way. Um, to remind everybody, one in three Canadians have diabetes, or what's called pre-diabetes. So when do you hope that testing for this will be able to start on humans? Well, originally I would have said four or five years away, but there are some techniques that we can use to carry out first in human testing in patients, placing these cells beneath the skin inside devices, really just for sampling, not trying to cure people at this point, but just to see if the cells are safe and if they behave in the normal way and they make insulin. So our hope is that we'll be able to do that perhaps in a matter of months if wow. we can now go through all the regulatory processes and, and, and move forward. And that would just be one step forward, an iterative step forward on, on our journey here. Uh, explain to our viewers how you're using AI, artificial intelligence, to help speed up some of this process. So we're working with, a, with a, another group of, of, of really brilliant international scientists to address the problem. So when, when we get to a situation where we grow these cells up for a few patients, we can probably still manage that with dishes in our, in our labs. But when we take this up to treat 463 million people across the world with all forms of diabetes, there's going to be some big challenges. So we need help with robotics and engineering. And we're working with Lonza, a, a company that has a device called the Cocoon. And this is like the, the shape of an egg, of a, of a, of a, like a bread maker. This looks like something from the Matrix. Yeah, well, you can see a room full of those cocoons. They call that the orchard. And we're <laughs> working with them now to map our processes onto their systems so that we can automate this process. And in theory, you could grow any regenerative cell in, in this kind of way uh, to, to, to be able to transplant a patient's own cells. And that's the beauty of this treatment, is we're making patients' own cells. And as a result of that, you won't need the anti-rejection drugs, which carry all the risks. This is absolutely incredible and fascinating to watch. You know, we should tell our viewers as well, 20 years ago, you and your team made history with what was known as the Edmonton Protocol. That's a procedure giving patients new insulin-producing cells. But it needed, as you were talking about, those powerful anti-rejection drugs, led to a lot of serious side effects. Uh, this treatment is different than that. How does that change the game for people? Completely. First of all, we'd have a, a limitless source of cells. We wouldn't be relying on, on organ donors. So that's going to really open up the possibility of treating many people. But eliminating those risks with the anti-rejection drugs, the increased cancers, the life-threatening infections, the other side effects that those drugs have, means today we can't really use them on, on children safely. And, and so in the future, we hope to be able to put patients' own cells back into the body. The idea is that the body will accept their own cells and won't be rejected. We still have to deal potentially with the autoimmune process that caused diabetes in, 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 in children and young adults, but that's a, an, another part of this, the story we're working on. Uh, but collectively, if we put our own cells back in, our body should accept them. Dr. Shapiro, it has been a fascinating conversation today. Congratulations to you and to your team uh, for your past success and for this one as well. We wish you the best in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, thanks for having us on. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.